This is Dr. Saad in front of you and today my topic is the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. As in the previous lecture, we were discussing about the inflammatory bowel disease. This disease consists of the two uh, diseases you can say that is the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. Now we will be discussing them one by one and basically we will be studying these two diseases in a comparison. Uh, we will study in the comparative way means we will compare both of these diseases so, can you, can, uh, so you can understand it very easily. So now moving on with the features means what are the features of this first of all the macroscopic features then the microscopic features and then the clinical features we will be discussing regarding the Crohn's disease as well as the ulcerative colitis now first of all the macroscopic first feature is the bowel region it means that in which region of the bowel the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis is common means where these diseases are more commonly occurring so the Crohn's disease basically it occurs in the terminal ileum ileocecal valve and cecum these are the three sites where the crohn's disease mostly occur basically this crohn's disease can occur in any part of the GRT but the most common sites are the terminal ileum the ileocecal valve and the cecum these are the sites of the Crohn's disease now we are moving on towards the ulcerative colitis that where the ulcerative colitis is common so basically in generally the ulcerative colitis is common in the colon and the rectum clear so the ulcerative colitis mainly occur in the colon now you can see here that in the Crohn's disease the small intestine is also involved and most of the time the small intestine is involved and some of the times the large intestine is also involved but here, but here you can see in the ulcerative colitis only the large intestine colon and the rectum they are involved clear now uh, two three points i have to make clear about the uh, certain terminologies you can say i have to make it clear right now regarding the ulcerative colitis the first term that is the pan colitis what is pancolitis? Pancolitis when the whole entire colon is involved means whole entire colon in the whole entire colon ulcerative colitis occur. Clear? Ulcerative colitis occurring in the whole entire colon that is called as the pancolitis. Basically uh, it is not uh, actually this is not uh, true that it occurs in the whole uh, means uh, colon but it does not extend beyond the transverse colon. Clear? So basically it means uh, according to the words it means that the whole colon is involved but practically or you can say most of the time the practical it is seen that it does not extend beyond the transverse colon it means the descending colon the transverse colon and just it does not extend more than the transverse colon just remain to the transverse colon clear so this is one terminology that was the pan colitis then there is another terminology that is called as the proctitis or you can say proctosigmoiditis proctitis means it basically it, it the full form full is the ulcerative proctitis ulcerative proctitis or proctosigmoiditis it means that whenever the sigmoid colon plus rectum is involved in the ulcerative colitis then it is called as the proctitis or ulcerative proctitis or proctosigmoiditis that when the sigmoid colon and the rectum they are involved specifically in the ulcerative colitis this is the another terminology regarding the ulcerative colitis now the third one that i have to make clear that is the back wash ileus basically this rarely occurs that rarely the ulcerative colitis it extend backward towards the terminal ileum that's why as its name indicate backwash ileus means that backwards so rarely this happens that the ulcerative colitis it extends towards the terminal ileum it move backwards towards the terminal ileum as i told you that it only occurs in the colon and rectum but in very rare cases the terminal ileum may also be involved and that is called as the backwash ileus these are all the terminologies related to the ulcerative colitis clear now Moving on towards our second macroscopic feature that is the distribution. 
Distribution means that the lesions, how the uh, what type of lesions are present in the Crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis. So the distribution is basically the skip lesions in the Crohn's disease. Skip lesions means that they are the patchy lesions. Okay, I'm writing it. I'm drawing it here. These are for this is for example your uh, small intestine. So the lesions present in the Crohn's disease they are skip lesions like this here is lesion here the lesion is present here the lesion is present here the lesion is present so it means they are you can simply say they are the patchy lesions in the Crohn's disease skip lesions or the patchy lesions are present in the Crohn's disease while in the ulcerative colitis there are diffuse lesions diffuse lesions means that this is your intestine and wholly this whole intestinal mucosa is involved this will be called as the diffusely involved uh, means intestine or mucosa that occur in the ulcerative colitis clear now moving on towards our third uh, you can say macroscopic feature that is the structure A structure basically it means narrowing narrowing of the lumen and the wall appearance means that how the wall is present it means it is thick in the Crohn's disease and thin in the ulcerative colitis now what does this means basically I am explaining you these two structures and the wall appearance together for suppose example that here is your intestine clear what happens basically this is your normal intestine and this is your normal lumen of the intestine in the Crohn's disease what happens that this this intestine it becomes basically thickening of this mucosa occurs this your intestine becomes thick clear this is the thickening of the mucosa so now as it is thick you can see the lumen it becomes less than it was normally present clear normally the lumen was this much wide but now this lumen is uh, become small so that's why what happens that the wall appearance is thick it means this is your thick wall appearance clear and the structure means narrowing you can see the wall the lumen has become narrowed so that's why it is called as the narrow or you can say a structure so a structure forming or narrowing occur in the Crohn's disease that you will write yes while in the ulcerative colitis there is you can say no narrowing why because in the ulcerative colitis thinning occurs now what is what occur in the ulcer this is about the Crohn's disease clear now okay I am writing I am drawing it here so that will it will be easy for you to differentiate between the ulcerative colitis and the Crohn's disease this is the Crohn's disease here is your normal intestine clear what happens that ulcerative colitis basically ulcers they are developed these these are the ulcers in the mucosa so basically what happens the wall of that uh, means a small intestine it becomes more thin because ulcers are developed when ulcers are developed so what happens that the wall become thin so there is thinning of the wall while they are saying the structure formation so here the, there is no structure formation you can see narrowing no there is no narrowing in this intestine so that's why the ulcerative colitis there is no narrowing no structure formation while uh, the wall is thin this wall is thin while in the Crohn's disease the wall is thick clear how the thickening of the wall occur and that's why the narrowing also occur clear so this is your macroscopic features these were your macroscopic features I told you about the four macroscopic features that were the bowel region in which the terminal ileum ileocecal valve and the cecum are involved in the Crohn's disease and the colon and rectum are involved in the ulcerative colitis then I have told you about the pancolitis backwash ileus clear then after that distribution distribution is the skip lesions means the patchy lesions that they are present in the Crohn's disease while in the uh, ulcerative colitis diffuse lesions they are present means diffusely whole intestine is involved while the structure means structure is narrowing narrowing occur in the Crohn's disease while it does not occur in the ulcerative colitis then we have the wall appearance that is thick in the Crohn's disease and the thin in the ulcerative colitis now we are moving on towards the macroscopic features first feature that is the inflammation inflammation in the Crohn's disease is basically a transmural inflammation now as you have studied there are uh, three types of the basically inflammation one inflammation in which the mucosa is involved one is the mural inflammation transmural inflammation 
clear so what happens that transmural inflammation it means that all the layers are involved clear all layers are involved this we have studied before also but i am telling you once again that transmural means all the layers are involved the mucosa submucosa uh, muscularis propria serosa all the layers they are involved in the transmural inflammation while in the mucosal inflammation only the mucosa is involved only the mucosa is inflamed clear while in the mural inflammation mucosa and submucosa they are inflamed but in the transmural all the layers they are inflamed so here the transmural inflammation occur in the crohn's disease mean all the layers are involved while in the ulcerative colitis mucosal inflammation occur means only the mucosa in is involved clear then we have the pseudo prolapse formation clear so this pseudo prolapse formation it basically this is moderate in the crohn's disease while it is marked in the ulcerative colitis you know that the pseudo prolapse what are the prolapse Uh, and what are pseudo prolapse you all know very well and uh, in uh, regarding the prolapse i will be discussing a separate lecture on the neoplastic non neoplastic prolapse so this is a separate topic then we are moving on to the ulcers basically the ulcers are in the crohn's disease they are deep knife like ulcers deep knife like ulcers means that basically what happens that these ulcers they are formed like first of all these are called as the aphthous ulcer aphthous ulcers basically first they are the superficial ulcers that develop in the crohn's disease then these ulcers they become deep and when they become deep they are called as the serpentine ulcers serpentine these deep ulcers knife like ulcers or serpentine ulcers which occur in the crohn's disease basically these are like this these are the serpentine ulcers clear you can see they are deep clear so deep knife like ulcers they are present in the crohn's disease clear then we have the superficial broad base ulcers clear superficial broad base ulcers are present in the ulcerative colitis clear this is the uh, about the ulcers now we are moving on towards the lymphoid reaction fibrosis and serocytosis they both all the all three of them they are more marked in the crohn's disease while they are less marked in the ulcerative colitis then very important we are moving on to the granuloma non casating granuloma non casating granuloma formation occur in the crohn's disease and this is the hallmark of the crohn's disease remember this is the hallmark of the crohn's disease the non casating granuloma while the granuloma formation does not occur in the ulcerative colitis so remember this thing that the non casating granuloma is the hallmark of the crohn's disease while there is no granuloma formation in the ulcerative colitis then we have the fistula sinuses basically these are formed in the crohn's disease but they are not formed in the ulcerative colitis now what are they and how they are formed basically i'm okay i'm drawing it here you can see here in the crohn's disease these fish fissures and the fistulas they are developed example this is your normal intestine and i told you in the crohn's disease your intestine become thickened the mucosa it is thickened you can you can see here this is thickened intestine thick walled okay so now what happens that here the fissure develops this is the fissure clear this is your fissure is starts developing and when this fissure it having the two openings one opening here one opening here now it becomes the fistula so fissures in the fistulas they are common in the crohn's disease while they are not formed in the ulcerative colitis so this is your means if it will be having two openings then it is the fistula if having only one opening then it will be called as a fissure clear fissure i am writing it here fissure is converted into the fistula clear now these were your microscopic feature which we in which we discuss about the inflammation pseudo prolapse ulcers and these all three lymphoid reaction fibrosis serocytosis which are more marked in the crohn's disease granuloma is very important hallmark of the crohn's disease and the fistula which also occur in the crohn's disease and does not occur in the ulcerative colitis now we are moving on towards the clinical features or you can say the clinical features of the ulcerative and the crohn's disease uh, crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis 
simply the perianal fistula obviously i told you that the fistulas they are formed in the crohn's disease so here the perianal fistula they also form in the crohn's disease basically this is named according to its uh, position site that the perianal uh, means around the anal region so they are also more common in the crohn's disease while in the ulcerative colitis they are not formed vitamin uh, malabsorption obviously the crohn's disease it occur in the terminal ileum i told you that the crohn's disease occur in the terminal ileum so obviously it will be interfering the malabsorption it will be interfering the absorption of the vitamins because vitamin b12 is, is absorbed in the terminal ileum so that's why here what happens that the malabsorption of the vitamins and the fat occur in the crohn's disease while not in the ulcerative colitis then we have the malignant potential basically the malignant potential uh, higher will be the malignant potential when the colon is involved so in the crohn's disease whenever the colon is involved rarely rarely if the colon is involved then it will be causing the malignant potential but in the ulcerative colitis as you know that the colon is obviously all the times it is involved that's why the malignant potential is more greater than the crohn's disease clear malignant potential of the ulcerative colitis is more common than the crohn's disease but if in the crohn's disease colon is involved so obviously here will also be the malignant potential will be higher then recurrence after surgery is more common in the crohn's disease while less common in the ulcerative colitis and the last condition that is the toxic megacolon toxic megacolon is basically a large you can say intestine large intestine solid intestine that is called as the megacolon it basically this is a complication of more common complication of the ulcerative colitis here it is more common that is less common in the crohn's disease clear so these are your features macroscopic microscopic and the clinical features of the crohn's disease and the ulcerative colitis now the last thing that i have to discuss is the clinical features of these two means how the patient will present with uh, present of the crohn's disease basically the patient will be presenting with the lower abdominal pain lower right abdominal pain i am telling you first about the crohn's disease that the lower right abdominal pain bloody diarrhea clear and this will mimic you to the uh, appendicitis acute appendicitis but actually it will be the crohn's disease clear so important thing is that lower abdominal right abdominal pain bloody diarrhea is also very important clear there will be iron deficiency anemia will also develop megaloblastic anemia like vitamin b12 deficiency will also develop because there is malabsorption because of the terminal ileum involvement so these are the clinical features and there may be some extra uh, intestinal manifestations also occur like the uveitis like the polyarthritis um, migraines and you can say the sacroiliitis clear so these are your extra intestinal manifestations basically these are common in both of the ulcerative colitis and the crohn's disease in both they are common then uh, we are moving on towards the ulcerative colitis how the uh, patient will present basically here there is also bloody diarrhea but the bloody diarrhea is stringy mucoid appearance stringy mucoid material diarrhea bloody diarrhea is common in both of them but a stringy mucoid appearance or material diarrhea is more common in the ulcerative colitis so this is your uh, clinical feature of ulcerative colitis while the extra intestinal manifestations basically they are uh, same in both crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis so uh, this is all about your inflammatory bowel disease which includes crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis so if you have any confusion any query you can ask in the comment section thank you so much allah hafiz